keep you waiting. Um, I've met a lot of you already. Uh, my name is Ben Frank. I'm the president of the Wildcats Hockey Club. And um, what I'm going to do today is obviously talk to you about our girls' hockey program and, and be available to answer any questions that you have. In order to do that, though, I want to tell you a little bit about our club first, because if you're making a decision to have your daughters or for players to join our club, you should know a little bit about us as well, what we're, what we're all about. Some of you have heard some of this before, and some of it will be new. Um, so, first of all, I showed some of you guys this before. I love hockey. I grew up in Toronto. This was around the corner from my house, and this is where I developed the, the passion that I have for the game. Um, I grew up, all I wanted to do was be a hockey player, and then when I continued on that through college and minor pro, and when that was done, uh, I didn't accomplish my ultimate goal of making it to the NHL, um, but I was able to be involved in the game for life and start coaching kids and getting back to the game, and that was something that I, I, I ended up finding out that I enjoyed even more. Um, I moved to California about 10 years ago on a fluke. Um, I was playing pro roller hockey and ended up having an opportunity to, to stay down here and become a hockey director. And I started out as, as coach Ben. So I was finishing playing, playing and I started coaching kids. And that was my first year um, at the Anaheim Wildcats at the time, coaching kids. And I started coaching a lot of teams. I was doing private lessons, I was doing hockey camps, things like that. And I really loved it. Um, but I still felt like there was something um, I wanted to do more than beyond the couple teams that I, that I coached. Uh, it was my daily life, um, coaching kids and learning about hockey. Um, shortly after I started coaching in ice hockey, uh, I had an opportunity to take over as a president of the club. At the time, it was a really small association, and the rink owner wasn't really involved anymore. And I took over. Yeah, go ahead and just, just put them on the well, that's our hockey director, Paul. How you doing, guys? Yeah, he said he's going to just stop jumping. Just step on the back. That's here. fine. Okay, thanks. Okay. Um, so I became president then. So if you notice, I put a, I have a tie on there, so I look very different. That is the president and the coach. So, so you can see how it's more, more professional. Um, it was a, it was a, it was a, it was a whole new world becoming the president of the organization. I thought it was just going to be the same. I was going to be responsible for more kids, but it was really, it was really different. A different dynamic now starting not just worrying about the teams that I was coaching now overseeing all of our coaches uh, learning the landscape of all the other organizations and, and how things work and how hockey in Southern California works um, go ahead okay. um, and to be honest it was it was really challenging and it was really frustrating because a lot of what I loved about coaching kids um, there was a lot of things that didn't seem to add up properly as I became a, a leader of an organization. And there was a lot of things that I saw that just didn't feel right with youth sports, with kind of politics of it, with the win at all cost mentality, with at the expense of, of kids' development and things like that. And I, there, there was a time where I considered moving away from it and doing something else with my life because it was, it was really challenging and frustrating with some of the dynamics to deal with. Um, at, around that time, I had been helping out with some USA Hockey events and they have people that go around to different parts of the country and uh, and run you know learn to play events and things like that. And I helped out with a few of them just just to just to get involved. And I ended up getting invited to what was called the USA Hockey ABM Symposium, an uh, American Development Model that had, that they had just launched. Um, and I didn't really know what it was about, but it was this event, and they invited me to come to it, and they paid for my trip to go. And I went, and it really changed my whole life and the whole direction of our organization. It was a week-long summit. They had experts from all over the world come in and talk about athlete development, and, uh, hockey, ho proper hockey development, physiology, psychology, sports science. Uh, they had people from Sweden, Finland, uh, Canada, everywhere, NHL general managers and coaches talking about it. And it was a week-long thing. I loved it, and I was completely invested in it. And then I was so excited, and then I was horrified right after because I realized what the way that athletes and kids should be developed in hockey, and then I realized what we were doing. Because we were just doing the same thing that everybody else was doing. And what I found out was that we were on the competition model. And all the youth hockey clubs that I was involved with and around, and all of our coaches were involved in the competition model, which means that we were trying to win hockey games. We were professionalizing youth sports, and we were trying to put together teams to win hockey games. And it was more about that than, than anything else, not purposely, but that's just kind of the way that things were going. And what we needed to be on was the development model, which was bringing the focus back to the athletes, back to the players and the kids, 
and their experience, giving them a great experience, and making sure that we did everything possible to develop them to become the, to their fullest potential. And some kids that might mean playing college division one hockey, and some kids that might mean just playing hockey for their whole life and loving the game, and getting back to the game and being a part of it. But we owe it to them to give them everything we can to give them their best experience. And that's, and it's not about, you know, my ego as a coach trying to win games or the organizations trying to, trying to com compete in these certain competitions. It's about giving the athletes a great experience. So we decided to make that shift and I spent the next three years um, changing our organization around the recommendations from USA Hockey of, a, of a American development, from the American development, development model. And there were really drastic changes. Um, there's a lot of things we had to change, that's why it took us three years. We became a model association recognized by USA Hockey in 2014, last year, uh, and there's only 17 across the nation. There's 1,800 clubs and there's only 17 model associations. And I'm telling you this because this applies to boys, girls hockey, this applies to six-year-olds, and this applies to 18 AAA players. American development model is develop, a, a stepping stone development model to do what's best for each age group age-appropriate long-term development to help them become the best players that they can be and to give them the best experience. So we have, it's age-appropriate, meaning that what we do with eight-year-olds is different than what we do with 18-year-olds. What we do with girls at 16 is different than what we do with even girls with boys at 16 because there are different points in their development and we need to be educated and follow the recommendations of how to best develop those athletes. So, some of the changes we made, for example, was we had to, we had to meet certain requirements for uh, training time. We had to maintain a three to one practice to game ratio in order to properly develop the athletes. To focus on, the, again, the training environment, not the, not the games. So the challenge was, again, how do we, how do we increase the practices, uh, but also keep the costs reasonable and those kinds of things. And all the recommendations that they, they showed us how to do all that, a lot of it had to do with sharing ice, uh, using station-based practices, things like that. But what we were able to do in the first year of implementing it, we increased the, the, the time of the training hours that our players get by two and a half times. So an old season, which was you know one season, now would equal two and a half times the amount of training in that season. So two and a half seasons to one. So if you look at that over the course of someone plays four or five years with us, the amount of different training now compared to the way we were set up before. So most. Most, I don't know uh, how many of you play in ska teams or girls teams or district teams, example, but most teams practice twice a week for an hour, right? And, okay. and that's, we have a 24 weeks uh, season, so that's 48, 48 hours for the season of practice. We practice three times a week and we do two hours a week in the gym area, so we do five hours of training, which equals 120 hours over the course of the season compared to 48. So that was a massive difference there, and our costs actually went down, our club dues actually went down. The second thing was our training quality. And so the way we practiced, all of our coaches from top to bottom needed to follow the, the recommendations and requirements of the American Development Model, of high activity rates and high skill rates, rather than focusing on team positions and system play and things like that. So these are, this, these are two actual practices. This was a practice that we tracked. I won't tell you, there was, it was, there was another club this year that they're not bad, like these coaches are actually highly regarded. They're experienced guys, but they're doing the old traditional way of running practices. And we tracked one player, we, you, what you do is USA Hockey provides a form, you track a player for the whole, entire practice, and you count the amount of repetitions they get at, at each skill set. So a traditional practice, and in a one hour practice, the coach was talking for 20 minutes of the whole practice, the player was skating for six minutes and 47 seconds, they made one pass, took eight shots, handled the puck for one minute, 16 seconds, and was talked to by a coach twice. We tracked the same, pl uh, we tracked the player in our, one of our practices with one of our new practices, which we just started doing this about a, a year ago, really officially, and these were the numbers, these were the numbers here. So our coach only talked during the practice for nine minutes, the player skated for 40 minutes instead of six minutes, 66 passes, 22 shots, 11 minutes clock handling, and the coaches feedback 21 times, so they have more coaches on the ice as well. So, just in training quality alone, we were seven times the amount of skating, 10 times the amount of clock handling, three times more shots, 10 times more coaches feedback. If you combine those two effects together, the training quality and the training volume, the amount of hours, over the course of one season, two and a half times the amount of training volume hours, an average of five, which was low, the difference of training quality repetitions, 
He goes 12 and a half. We estimate that we now give the players 12 and a half seasons of training in the water. Okay. Which again, if you go over a number of years, can make a dramatic difference in their development as players. So the main thing I want you to take away from this is that, again, our focus is helping the players become the best they can be and making sure our environment is, is such that we do everything we can to, to do that. The, the second thing that we did just this year as well was we became a proud partner of the Positive Coaching Alliance. And what that is, it's, it takes it beyond hockey. So this is backed by Major League Baseball, U.S. Soccer, Phil Jackson from the NBA, Steve Young from the NFL. This is bigger than the sport itself. This is about the life lessons through sport are more important than the actual wins itself. Whatever the coaches and the players are always trying to win games, but bigger than that, we want to teach life lessons through sport. I didn't end up making millions of dollars in the NHL, even though that's what I wanted to do when I was 14 years old. But I can't imagine my life without sports. I can't. All of my best friends were from playing from hockey. All, I've traveled the world because of hockey. I went to college and played hockey there. I can't imagine what my life would be like if I didn't have sports and the person that I've become. So we can't forget that. And a lot of times in youth sports, unfortunately, uh, those, those lessons are forgotten, which is the reason why three or four kids by the time high school quit sports altogether, which is really a travesty because it's an important part of their development. So um, we, we're the only model association in Southern California from USA Hockey, and we're the only proud partner of Positive Coaching Alliance. Uh, San Jose Jun Junior Sharks are a model association as well, and a pro partner of Positive Coaching Alliance, but they're the only ones in, in California that are also, also doing this. So I give you a lot about background about our club. Now, what does this have to do, and why, you know, why girls hockey? So these are my two girls. Uh, this is Riley and Harper. They're three and almost one. And I don't know if they're going to play hockey or not. I don't know if they're going to. They can do whatever they whatever they like. I hope they find something they're passionate about, something that they love. And I, and I, I definitely want them to play sports and they use whether they play it seriously or not. But I do believe that girls should have the same athletic opportunities that boys have. They should have all the, all the same. They have just as many important life lessons and experiences to gain from sports as boys do. And what would I be telling them? If I was so passionate, I mean, I probably work 80 to 100 hours a week in our organization. So passionate about building a, a youth hockey organization, but if it was just for boys, I, I wouldn't feel right about that. Also, my wife was an athlete growing up. She's from California. She played basketball, tennis, did track, and she would say to tell you the same thing that without sports, her life would be markedly different. So this is what hockey is. What I'm passionate about. Hockey is what I grew up playing. This is my vehicle to be involved with kids' lives and make a difference in the world. And it's important to me to make that available to girls as well. So our vision for the organization, uh, I, I've been the president, this is my fourth year being the president of the organization. Our boys program is built up. We have Riverside and now Carl's by this, that's starting. We have Mike's up through Midget, AAA. Uh, we want to have a full girls program. So we want to have programming from Mike's through Midget's, 8U through 19U, ultimately. And we want you guys, we hope that you guys decide to be a part of it. We want you to make the decision, if you make the decision to become part of the Wildcats Hockey Club, we want you to make the decision not just for this year, not just for next year, hopefully for the, for the long term. So for the younger girls, that means maybe you play for the organization for four or five years and we help you develop to become better than you ever could have imagined as a hockey player. For the girls that are older, maybe you only have one or two years uh, of, of hockey left before you age out, we hope that you come back and coach and help us coach the young girls and stay involved with our program and help it grow. We want this to really be part of something that, that's, that's an important part of everyone's lives. Uh, we want to have, that's not the highest quality picture, but uh, that was uh, two, two athletes who train in our training center. We want to have equal opportunity and support for the girls' programs as we do the boys' programs. Uh, some, some programs aren't always as supportive between the girls and boys. If, a girl, if it means, makes sense for a girl to also play in a boys' team in our program and play in the girls, we want to be supportive of that. If it makes more sense to be on one and not the other, or, or have the teams work together and the same level of coaching, the same level of training, we want to provide the same opportunities to the girls' programs. And finally, we want to have a mentorship, a mentorship culture. We want these girls that are our, that are older, older girls out there with our, with our young, with our younger girls being their role models because they need someone to look up to. We want them coming to the games and watching them play, and coming to the practices and watching them play, and we want them to be uh, to to have female role models to look up to. Our coaches are great, and I hope we'll build more female coach, coaches as well. But for the, for young girls to have a female uh, role model that's older that's playing is, is really special as well. And finally, we want to provide advancement opportunities. So between the relationships that we have within our organization, uh, we're really tied into USA Hockey, College Hockey Inc., and the college coaches and things like that. 
that may or may not be the path for all the girls. Some of the girls may, like I said, they may play uh, club hockey through their youth, and that's plenty, and they go on to be successful people in college and those things, and that's great. For the girls that have high aspirations to play hockey at the highest levels, we want to provide the training and the guidance to help you get there as well and, put, and really put those stepping stones in place to help girls achieve those goals. One of the, a couple of girls that have played for our boys programs over the years are already starting to get uh, college interest and things like that, and it's just, we've helped them through that process as well, and it's really exciting to see. Are they still playing for you, or have they gone to girls' teams as well? Yeah, we have, so for example, one of them is a goalie, so she played midget double-A boys with us last year, um, so, and then her older sister played up until last year with us, and then she did play girls' midget, because she was a defenseman, she's only about five feet tall, like maybe 105 pounds, and midget double-A boys, they made a decision which we supported to play girls. So she trained, she continued to train with us and play girls hockey. Her sister, who was a goalie, decided to keep playing boys. But this is why we've had a number of girls who've come through our programs like that, who've been really strong players and play with our boy team, our boys teams. But at some point, they, 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 they need to play female hockey. And we haven't had that option in the past. So it's really important for us to, to have that option. So again, a, girl's, a girl could come through our program and play boys, might squirt peewee, and maybe girls or boys, and then play girls that ban them or bench if you want them to have those options to stay within our program. So for this year, in year one, the plan is to start with the 19U AA team. And just to clarify that, at girls hockey for the CAHA, for the, the official classifications, there's AA and there's AAA. So at boys, like AA and AAA are the highest, highest levels of, of, of youth hockey. At girls, there's AA and AAA. AA would be the, is the lower level of of girls hockey. Um, so the reason we will start there is because this is our first year obviously and there's going to be a wide spectrum of, a, of age groups within that team. The other thing that's different about girls hockey is because because there's, no, there's not checking and things like that, they allow you to be more flexible about the, about the ages as well. So theoretically, and this could change if we have you know different in a different age group, the main point is starting with the team, but theoretically we could have from 2002 birth years through 97 birth years on one, on one girls team. Obviously we'd like to continue to build that out and have more specific age groups, but that, that's within the rules to do that, to play girl, to play in the girls competition. Um, we want to start a mentorship program right away where the girls will be involved with, we, we will have girls in our program, I don't know if we'll have other full girls teams, but we'll have girls at the 8 and under, we'll have girls at the 10 and under, girls at the 12 and under. We want to have these, our girls team involved with those, with those girls coming out helping with the little ones. Obviously it won't be a mandatory component, but we'd love to get, get you involved and start to build that culture. And finally, we'll plan a lot of special events to, to build the program. So I'm, I'm in direct contact with Michelle Amadon at USA Hockey, and she's in charge of, of all female hockey for, for the US development. She's also one of the national team coaches. She's been on the bench for the Olympics and things like that. And she's helped me put together this program. There's a number of events over the course of the year, Girls Hockey Day across America, when the, when the women play and world championships and things like that, to do special events, to get new girls out and to the existing girls that are playing together, and again, start to build a culture of, of, of a girls hockey program. So our next steps, um, on the table there, there's, a, a, there's some printouts of the team plans that we emailed out. Um, those are also on our website, feel free to, to, to grab them. But we have pre-trial clinics over the next few Thursdays. Our tryouts for this team are the AA weekend, which is uh, Saturday, Sunday, June, the first weekend of June, I think it's 3rd and 4th. 6th, 7th. What's that? You're Fifth, right. 6th, 7th. You're right. So 6th and 7th are Fifth, our tryouts. Sixth. Yeah, Friday so I think we have Saturday and, we are, our, our, our Saturday and Sunday here. Um, that girls team will play all out of here for next year practice, all out of here. Um, the season won't start until late August. There's a 24 week of weeks of practice, but it'll go until through March. Um, and a lot of the information is in our, our the team plans there as well. So we'll have a clinic tonight at seven at uh, seven thirty. The next few Thursdays, all building towards towards tryouts in June. Then there's a little bit of off time before the season gets started in August. Questions, comments. Feel free to ask in the group. We can also, I'm, I'm available to ask things personally as well. Yes? Well, the girls start getting scouted at the different tournaments. This is not going to, this team is not going to play tournaments. They, they will. Right? They will. So that, so there's, there's for Kaha, there's two, there's two big weekends. 
There's one, uh, and it's on the team plans, there's one in San Jose in MLK, and there's one in Thanksgiving in Lakewood. And that's where you play the other Kaha teams for official Kaha rankings. So there's those two already without having to travel very far. Obviously, when Lakewood's, you know, over Thanksgiving weekend is, is just a drive. San Jose, you could drive or, you know, you could drive or fly. But those are two, two important showcase events. Um, and then there'll be local games and tournaments as well. The, the, the main thing is, I think it's unrealistic to think that we put a team together this year and have these girls get college scholarships, Division I college scholarships this year. So while we want to expose them to that and teach people about, teach the girls and the parents about how that path works for those that are interested in it, the most important thing is the training environment this year, getting the group together, giving them a great experience to motivate them even more to, to play the game and helping them uh, get to a certain level where they can pursue where they can pursue their goals further by, by, by increasing their skill sets. So we want to expose you guys to those events, to those other play those other girls teams and there will be prep school scouts there and things like that. Um, and maybe some college scouts and things, which is great. But the main thing is about the experience and getting you guys getting you guys developed so you can start to pursue those goals if you choose to in the future. Uh, there are some of the other things that are really um, Mis, mis, uh, misconstrued facts about like college hockey and things. A lot of times, boys and girls now aren't starting college hockey until 20 years old. So you have a lot of times you have more time than you think if that's your goal to, to work towards. And also, uh, a lot a lot lower percentage of people are on full athletic scholarships than, than most people think as well. Usually, it's some kind of some kind of combination of athletics, academics, financial aid. Uh, or partial, partial academic, partial athletic scholarships and things like that. So there's still, regardless of you know Division One, Division Three, there's all kinds of different options. If those are things that you guys are interested in the future, there's great opportunities to play college hockey, women's hockey. Depend, there's different levels of play for that as well. There's club, there's Division Three, there's Division One. You can continue to, to achieve those goals if, if that's something you're interested in. We can help you guys understand that. Yes. Um, your your website doesn't mention cost. What's what would be the average cost, or what 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 we can expect to spend if they do make the team? Or sure. So so the cost this this team structure of the practice planning is the same as what our that age group midget or bantam with A B would be for our boys, which the the exact budget will be out in a couple of weeks, but it was about four thousand dollars last year total. For each player. For each player for the season. Now that's split into nine, uh, nine monthly payments. So there's a payment schedule. They it sh and that includes that includes the 72 practices, 48 off ice sessions, the coaching, and 20, 20 games, 20 game schedule. Does that include their tournaments? Though? Doesn't include the tournaments. So we'll have that all detailed out, where it shows the club pro the club. Program because the tournaments are something that just is an extra piece split up by the number of players. So what I would recommend is for sure we do those two girls tournaments, and I imagine we're probably going to do one or two other local just local tournaments. So you just have an entry fee split up by the number of girls on the team. So that cost will be a team budget based based on based on how many players are on the team and what that extra expenses are doing. And then there's uniform fees besides. Correct. And what are those run roughly? So for the uniforms, the only thing that we require is jerseys, socks, and practice jersey. We have like tracksuits and all those things available, but they're not required. So the the jerseys, the two jerseys and socks are right, uh, are right around three hundred, I believe. Uh, you can, if you want to get like the whole ball of axe, if you want to get like uh, tracksuits and dry land and all those things as well. There's a package. I think it's five hundred, and it includes like all of, all of it. So what's required at tryouts is there's a deposit, which is at the double level is usually 750, and then you make monthly payments from uh, July through March for the rest of the club dues, and then you get your uniforms in the end of Ju end of June. So the monthly payments I believe for that level were like around 330 dollars. Um, and that was, like I said, that would be July through March. Yes? So do you have to pay up front um, at tryouts? Um, or, or so we're assuming that everybody that tried out, it makes the team? Is that...? Well, we... 
the most important thing for us is, is putting a team together of girls who want to work hard and get better. So obviously we're not going to put someone there who can't have a good experience. But other than that, it's you know we want we want to build the girls' program. So if someone was if we felt like someone was completely just no way near ready, we would try to come up with some other plan for them to to get there. But the, but really, you know, it, it, all the girls that I've seen so far have experience playing on teams and things before. I haven't seen anyone that has come to our clinics yet that I wouldn't want to be a part of our team, as long as they're ready to come and work hard and work as hard as they can and get better. It's all about uh, getting together and practices and, and training. So when we, I can give you, we can give you guys, you know, if you're worried or nervous about it, we can give you an, an idea. We're happy to meet with people individually and talk to you about where we, if we feel that you're ready and that kind of thing um, in advance. But what you need at tryouts is, you don't need to pay up front for the whole season. You need to pay the deposit, which is seven fifty, which is the first payment. And then you need to get the uniforms towards the end of the month. And then the next payments wouldn't start until July. Is that reimbursable if we decide not to go through with it? The seven fifty, or once well, you once once you make the deposit, it's non-refundable technically. You know, we don't want we're not we don't want to take someone's money and not even have them play. Yeah. Usually, we just you know, obviously we want to keep the team together and things like that. I would I would say you know if something crazy happened or something you had to move away or something like that. That's happened in the past. We just refunded mm -hmm. refunded the money. But obviously, we wouldn't want you to make a commitment unless you were ready and felt comfortable to commit to that. But on the website, when you click on tryouts and tryout dates, and I guess it's mostly boys, that's on the website, it was like $30 per tryout night. Yeah. But yeah. not for the girls. Yeah, it's, it's, it is for the girls as well. I think we have, usually we have a two, uh, a two day, an option if you, for, if you sign up for both days would be cheaper than the than thirty dollars. So you know that's a good point though. I should ch check on that because like for the boys, for example, in the Riverside tryouts, we have Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and it's thirty dollars per tryout or seventy five dollars for the three days. And the, like our returning players, we'll ask them to come for all three days. What happens is sometimes people will show up on a Sunday because they didn't something didn't work out somewhere else or something like that. So we we charge. A little bit more if they only come to one if they're not committed to the program. But so for the girls, we'll set up, if it's not set up already, it'd be fifty dollars for for both days, which is you know twenty five dollars to escape, which is right in line with our clinics and everything else. So if that's, I'll double check to make sure that's set up online. If it's not, then I'll, I'll get it set up. Yeah, I see something about you trying to do a Memorial Day tournament. Yes, uh, so we do have a Memorial Day tournament. This seems kind of short notice. Yeah, so originally, <laughs> originally I wanted to, really wanted to put a, a girls team into it, but we, we, it's, it's too short notice okay. right now. So we do have, we have t Wildcat teams in the tournament. We're happy to have any of the girls that want to play in it, but they would be playing on mixed, on mixed teams. So you're welcome to play, like, so for example, I was wanting to get a group of girls to play as an all-girls team and like a non-check, you know, band of B or something like that, or, or midget A. Um, so we won't be able to do that, but like I said, if we have O1s and O2s, they could play on our band of B tournament team, our 2000s, 99s could play on our midget A tournament team. We can put some groups together if you guys, if you're interested in playing, we could definitely have a spot for you. This one be here? There's games at both places here. I remember, so I so I get the schedule. Yeah. I, yeah. So it actually is on the website, so it would be Wildcats in the Midget Competitive Division is, is the, the Midget Team and Bantam Pool B. I can, I can get you guys information, but the schedule is on the website on our calendar for the tournament. It would be the Wildcats Bantam, for Bantam Midget Girls it would be Pool B, and for Midget it would be Midget Competitive. Questions? Comments? So is midget a check or for the tournament? The, it, mixed teams is always would be checking. Yeah. So when the when we have a full girls team together though, so let's say we had this um, girls nineteen U team play in midget A boys Skaha division or mixed Skaha division or an exhibition game, those games would all be non check if it's an entire girls team. But when girls play on a mixed team, the games the games are are really checked. The maximum number of kids that you have on the team? The maximum number we're allowed on the roster from USA Hockey is 20. But we'd like to play with 
you know, 13 to 15 skaters and two goalies at this, at this age group. Now again, um, so we, we usually take smaller rosters on most, a lot of our teams to try to make sure that all the kids get plenty of game time. But the girls program we want to build, we want to build the program as much as we can. So I think if we got to the point of like, we really had 22 girls here that really wanted to play, we'd make, we'd make two teams and split the age groups. We're fine having you know, 11 or 12 on a team, that's just, that's perfectly fine. That'd be great if we had two teams. But I think you know, 12 to 15 is, is a reasonable, reasonable goal. What's the minimum you need? Uh, for double A competition, you have to have 15 rostered players, including goalies. So to be to be eligible. Although I think there's more flexibility with the girls there. I think you can be at 13. I'll confirm. But I know with the boys, double A need 15 players to be officially for double A. For A and B though, it's 12. So I'll, I'll double check that on the girls. But we've had uh, you know not our, uh, this is my second presentation for the girls hockey. Um, not everyone can make every night. There's a lot of clinics. Sometimes there's certain girls, sometimes there's others. We've had there's. There's been more interest down here than I really could have, could have imagined. There's a amount of girls that play down here that haven't had a girls' option. So we've had probably over 30 uh, girls interested in the program. And it's just a matter of getting everyone together, answering questions, and, uh, and building it. I think if we, I, I, I'm very confident, if we get a core group that will commit all in right now, even if that is nine or so, right in the next couple of weeks, I know that we'll, we'll fill that team out and we'll grow it out because there's, there's, I'm, I'm sure there's some that are also just not sure if it's going to, you know, what, what to do. But I know once we get it started, there's, there's so many girls that are looking for these, these options. And, and I, I know we, we can give them a great experience. Okay. I'll, I'll be around all night, guys. Um, so feel free to, to grab me if you have any questions or further comments and things like that. You guys are on nice at 7.30. Uh, hopefully all you guys can stay, um, and then we have yeah a couple of more weeks on the thurs the Thursdays, and then tryouts on the sixth and seventh Saturday and Sunday. So, um, Coach Pepper, have you got who's met Coach Pepper so far? Okay, great. So he's gonna be the he's gonna be the head coach for the team, um, and he's gonna be he's out on the ice now. Uh, he's he's great. He's uh, he he played pro hockey. He was a college athlete. Um, but I'll, you know, also uh, a great, great role model and great temperament with with the, with the kids too. Very, very mature and, and I think someone that you would all feel comfortable with being around your daughters too. So yeah. he'll he'll be around and um, feel free to introduce yourself to him too if and ask him any questions. He's the head guy down here for us at Carlsbad. Okay, great. Thank you very much, everybody. Thanks for your time. I'll be around if anyone needs anything. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.
There's two options. So there's if you have some scholarships, things that you can apply for and see what I was at three different points. So we can we want to be the girls involved. So we'll figure something out. But I would just start with start with you know if she's interested in paying for this and scholarship things, figure out which Do you want to go get your gear out of the car? Let's talk in Thank you. How you doing?